So who's going to watch you die? An old 80s tune by Brian McKnight and Vanessa Williams that say, love, says, Love breaks your heart and takes no less than everything. Love is one of my favorite topics. And there's been more written about it than probably any of us can imagine. But one of the quotes that first grabbed me when I got to this church is on one of those windows now. J. Herman Randall quoted out in the social hall from a sermon he preached over a hundred years ago to this congregation. And someone, somewhere, decided that was the quote that needed to go on the social hall windows. And what he had to say was, but by this test, by this test, a man will stand or fall. How do you love? It was a sermon preached in November of 1904, and he used the same text that we started with our affirmation from this morning, from 1 John chapter 4, about God is love. His sermon was titled, A Neglected Dogma. And he talked about all the dogmas of the church that have gone on before and how he had let go of one after another, but this was the one that he felt was most neglected and the one that needed to be lifted up most. He said, the real test, which the Bible teaches unmistakably and which Jesus and Paul and John point out, the real test of our love for God is our love for each other. The great question that ought to be put to every one of us who comes into a church is just this, how well do you love You can't get away from it. If you take Jesus Christ's own words, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, you have done it unto me. Not one single word in that parable of the future judgment scene as to a man's creedal tendencies or to a man's theological position, to one's views on any one of the mooted doctrines, but just this one supreme test. Did you do it unto one of the least of these? How do you love? How do you love? And by that test, we stand or fall through all eternity. How do you love? He concludes that sermon by saying, stating the belief that love is the one great saving power in the world today. A hundred years ago, he said this. Is it still true? You may think it is old that we have said all there is to be said about it before, about love, that is. But let me tell you, we have not learned a one millionth part of what we need to learn about it yet. And I agree. There is still so much for us to learn about how to live out love. The only power that is going to save society and lift us up is not in the power of preaching or teaching or the university or the college or the high school or the church. It is the power of love and kindliness and sympathy in human hearts as it goes forth over human lives. And he ended with the prayer, God help us to understand and to realize the meaning of love in our lives every day. And so that, too, is an Advent prayer for us this week, but also a prayer for us each week and every day to grow in our understanding of love in our lives. How it unites us, when it separates us, when things done in the name of love have done harm, how to distinguish between love that is healthy and love that smothers, that breaks, that claims. We can spend and will the rest of our lives 
discerning the different ways to be dressed up in love. I'd like to share with you also another piece of that poem of T.S. Eliot's from which this morning's service takes its title. Love, he says in conclusion, is most nearly itself when here and now cease to matter. Old men ought to be explorers. Here or there does not matter. We must be still and still moving into another intensity. For a further union, a deeper communion, through the dark cold and the empty desolation, the wave cry, the wind cry, the vast waters of the petrol and the porpoise. In my end is my beginning. Sound like a paradox? Both notice where love is and also here and now ceasing to matter. Paradox, it's been said, is the gateway to the divine. So here's your invitation to walk through. Have a blessed third week of Advent, my friends.